In tonight's Political Insider, the January of doom. Senate Democrats predicted they would maintain their advantage over Republicans after this year's midterm elections. So why are they resorting to scare tactics to raise money? For insight, we turn to our guest tonight on Capital Insider, Dave Leventhal, senior reporter with the Center for Public Integrity. Dave, the Democratic senatorial campaign has sent out several emails to constituents recently in January, the January of doom. The messages were entitled Deep Trouble, Catastrophe, and Doomed. They say the party is in danger of being outspent by Republicans and to donate now. Do these scare tactics work? Simply said, Morris, scare tactics and fear does raise money. And oftentimes, if you are in a position where you have a very competitive election cycle like we have in 2014, and that's ahead of you, then you want to do everything that you possibly can to get your supporters opening up their wallets, getting out their credit cards, and making payments to your campaign. Sunshine and love is not going to be a great fundraising tactic all, all the time. Uh, oftentimes, you have to really poke and prod them to say, look, we have a very, very very tough road ahead of us and we're scared you should be scared open up your wallets and start donating same thing with the political ads negative anti bad ads work when you've got to slander and slime the other person <laughs> much of the Democrats messaging targeted the Koch brothers why these businessmen and not other politicians well the Democratic senatorial campaign committee has kind of used a, a couple of boogeymen here number one you have Mitch McConnell number two you have John Boehner but the Koch brothers in particular time and again it's not just a Senate a Democratic campaign committee, but you have the Congressional Campaign Committee. You have different candidates who are Democrats who are using the Koch brothers as the ultimate uh, foils, if you will, to raise money. They are, uh, first of all, easy targets because they have pumped hundreds and millions of dollars into campaigns through various entities, nonprofit groups, or directly over the past many election cycles, and are being incredibly active through all of their different surrogate groups throughout the United States in this current 2014 election cycle. So no matter who it is, they seem to be the, the go-to guys, if you will, on the, uh, on the uh, evil Republican, evil right. conservative side. And, and those are, uh, it's not letting up at all. And as you said, for quite some time, they're the gift that keeps on giving. So, yeah. in yeah. contrast, now Republican email campaigns, they're upbeat. Do they have more of a reason to be optimistic in their messaging? Well, here's the irony, Morris, because the Republicans, the last time we were able to look at federal campaign finance records that indicated how much both sides were raising, uh, the, the Democrats were actually ahead. So, in a way, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee uh, has a little bit more to be hardened with uh, than the Republicans do. Now, we're going to get a new set of numbers in a few days, and the story may change, but the Democrats right now are kind of in defense mode overall. Number one, they have a tough road in the House. They have to get 17 more seats potentially that they have to pick up in order to regain the House. It's a very, very uh, small prospect that they're going to be able to do that in reality. And on the Senate side, they only have a few seats advantage, and they want to retain that as much as possible. So that, again, it goes back to the sort of the fear and loathing that's going on on their side, where they're trying to get their supporters to be as generous as they possibly can, and using fear as a motivation in order to get them to donate. All right, let's switch gears to Hillary Clinton. She hasn't announced if she'll run, but the Ready for Hillary Super PAC is already raising millions. What does the Citizens United case have to do with her presidential bid? The Citizens United case at this early juncture has everything to do with at least a super PAC that has supported her, as you said, to the tunes of millions and millions of dollars. And here she is, not even a candidate. Here it is, not even a, a year. It could be more before she announced, if she ever does announce, for a presidential run. So it just shows you how dramatically things have changed in the election cycles, uh, in politics in general, when it comes to the ability for these outside groups that are not directly plugged into a campaign, or in this case, a campaign that may or may not even exist, and yet they have the ability to unra raise unlimited amounts of money to support a candidate or even a potential candidate to lay the groundwork, in this case, with Hillary Clinton for that potential candidacy if it does come to bear. Now, if Hillary doesn't run, what happens to all that money? It, many things could happen with the money. First of all, this organization, which is nominally independent, even though it's a, it's a part and parcel of many of the supporters and uh, close surrogates of Hillary Clinton for years 
years and years and years. Uh, it is still an independent organization. If she doesn't run, it could go ahead and use the millions of dollars it's raised to support other Democrats. It could uh, convert itself into another type of political operation. Uh, there is uh, various different options, but if Hillary Clinton does run, what it does mean is that the Ready for Hillary Super PAC will have, number one, again, laid the groundwork for her candidacy, and number two, given her the ability to uh, almost have a, a jump start uh, going into the campaign. There's no other group for a Joe Biden or another Democrat, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, or some of the other uh, people uh, who have been thrown around as potential candidates in 2016. Uh, no other organization exists quite like this one. So it's a huge advantage for Hillary Clinton, both in the context of a Democratic primary and, of course, a general election if that was to go forward. You're a proud new papa. It's good to have you back. So I'll show this to Thomas sometime <laughs> years from now so he knows what you've been up to. Dave Leventhal, senior reporter with the Center for Public Integrity. Thanks and congratulations, Dave. Thank you very much, Morris. I appreciate it.